two guests I have on my right, Clint Horn, Clinton Horn from Lake Wales, and Lawrence Epps, also from Lake Wales. We're here to discuss the history of Lake Wales and especially the history of Roosevelt School. So, Mr. Horn, Clint. Yes. <laughs> tell me when you came to Lake Wales. I came to Lake Wales in 1938, and we landed out at Charlotte Suzanne. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, we had a four bedroom house at Charlotte Suzanne. That my belonged father, to them. That, that belonged they... to uh, Charlotte Suzanne. My father, he was a brick mason, carpenter, and electrician, and he was building. He had come down to Lake Wales several times, and he came back to West Florida, and he decided he was going to bring the family down to Lake Wales. And how many kids, children in your family? We had two at the time. It was two in the family at the time. Uh, we had a total of six kids, but uh, two of them was born in West Florida, myself and my older sister. And the remaining four was born in Lake Wales. Oh, good, good. Yes. And so your father was there when when Mrs. Henshaw did a lot of the building. Of that the is, that is correct, yes. He was her partner. They were, they were, they were two peas in a pod. <laughs> Well, getting along however, they the would. They, however, they they had some very lively conversations <laughs> every day. <laughs> That's what I understand. And uh, the Henshaws, um, especially Carl, my father took a liking to him, and he Carl was always at the house with us, just like he was one of the kids. Probably like the food there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So um, that's the six children in your family yes. from the time you were young. What about you, Lawrence? Well, I moved here from Bell Glade, Florida. I was born in Bell Glade, Florida, and that's South Florida, near West Palm Beach. And uh, I moved here in 1955. And uh, you were a kid. I was a kid, yes. And what happened was uh, during those times, uh, there was a lot of migrant work being done. And my great-grandmother, she lived in Lake West, Florida, and my parents lived in Bell Lake, Florida. So uh, the vegetables uh, were harvested during different times of the year. So one part of the uh, year, they would be in Bell Glade, and one part in, in Lake Wales, and then they would go to Sanford. So my great-grandmother had property in Bell Glade and Lake Wales. So when... Uh, I kind of noticed it was a difference. I chose, you know, Lake Wales, and then, you know, I, I left my mother and father, you know, with, 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 with Bell Glade. And what was the difference in the deciding factor? It was the color of the soil. You know, <laughs> down in South Florida, you have that muck. And, man, if you get that muck in your skin, it itches, and, I mean, it just... Oh, really? So when I saw this white sand in Lake Wales, I told them, no more Bell Glade. <laughs> so I moved up here at age five. I, I, I could determine, you know, you know the difference and uh, I came in 1955. So you started school in Lake Wales? At Roosevelt, Roosevelt High School and uh, one one fact that what uh, made me end up in was uh, back then transportation was a problem. All my school records was in Palm Beach County and my birth certificate so things were not like they were now. You know, you have fax machines, email. Back then, you you know, you had to wait on the post office. So when it came time to register for school, I didn't have my birth certificate. So Janie Howard Wilson was the principal of the elementary school at Roosevelt. So if you didn't have all your paperwork, you had to wait until the next year because my birthday came in November. So that's how I ended up graduating from Lake West High School in 69 instead of 68. Really? Yes, so I started uh, elementary school one year later. So the, the, all of the school from elementary all the way through 12th grade was at Roosevelt. Roosevelt, Roosevelt at that time. everything. Everything, yes. Mm -hmm. And was it located where Roosevelt is On now? East Street, yes. So all of the grades were held there? At that time. At that, ti at that time. Interesting. Yes. Very interesting. So you started school at a normal age, which would have been six at that time? Well, I don't know about normal age. <laughs> it, it was pretty much the same as uh, Lawrence. 
um, I was born in February, and of course, uh, having obtained six in February, I was not in the upcoming class. Mm -hmm. right. So I had to wait until uh, the next September roll around. Right. And then I was able to enroll. Right. However, I went through up to the uh, sixth grade. I, was, I had been promoted to the sixth grade and at that time, I dropped out of school to assist. Which was news to me. Yes, I dropped out of school at 12, and I went to work at removing stumps mm -hmm. in Highland County. So you had to move to Highland County? No, 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 no. The, the, the stump crew would pick us up, take us down. We would work several days, and you would come back to Lake Wales, you would take uh, changing clothes and that whatever that meant uh, back there. You know, you'd take some where you could wash one outfit out at the time and you were living in camp-like homes. Really? Yes. Was there no law that said that a 12-year-old boy didn't? No, no, didn't back then, not, not then, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was fairly typical right. back then, uh, though at that time it was typical that uh, if a child obtained somewhat around 12, 13 years old, um, it was not unusual for that child to get out and work, even if that child was in school for a time. But since the work was out of Lake Wales, I had to go and stay away sometime two and three days. Subsequently, the same place that Epps was born at, we were uh, transferring back and forth between Bell Glades and Lake Wells. Mm -hmm. I was part of that crew that started that type of work going between Bell Glades and Pehokee right. and so forth and so on this in Lake Wells. This was hard physical labor. Yes, it was. Were you big for a 12-year-old? I was big for a 12-year-old and, and it seems that after I got 13 or 14, I didn't grow very much <laughs> after that. Um, so what happened uh, then was once what we call, we refer to it as the season. Right. Once the Florida season was over, then I would get on a bus that they would transport us up to New York, where we would pick potatoes and mm -hmm. pick apples and, you know, things like that, and, and beans and so forth and so on. So I was a tractor driver when I was 13 or 14 years old. Were you getting any education at that time? I was going to school part-time, um, you know, it wasn't full-time. When I was up there and school was in, they kind of corralled me and put me in school. And then we had a tough time for them to let me out of school during the time that it was school. Well, it, sometime we left early mm -hmm. in the season. And then they would insist that you cannot have these kids out there in the north at that time. They were a little bit more stricter in the north than they were in the south. So, so I uh, enrolled in school up in the Rochester area. It was the suburbs of Rochester, and then we and would then I'd come back here. And during that time, um, see, I stayed out for over a year, just out of school completely. But then, after I went back to school, uh, the principal would let me out of school selective days, sometime two and three days a week, to go to work. And I would go, I was considered a regular student. Was that Janie Howard Wilson? The well, she was, was the she principal, principal of the elementary school at elementary that time, school. yes. And who was the superintendent at that time? I don't recall the superintendent. Uh, I know we had uh, Mr. Carwell, who was, uh, I think he was the assistant principal to Mr. Brody right. mm -hmm. at that time. Because Mr. Brody is the... the he was the principal of the high school. High school. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Mr. Carwell was the assistant principal, but he was also, theoretically, he was over the elementary. The principal of the high school was theoretically over the, both the elementary okay. yeah. and the high school. Mm -hmm. And Frank Brody was his name, wasn't it? No, A.L. Brody. A.L. Brody. Alonso. Alonso. Alonso Brody. And he was still there when Oh, yes, when I was there. Him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's remarkable. He must have started pretty young. Yes. Mm -hmm. Was education 
regarded as um, a treasure? Was it a prize to, to be able to go to school? Or was it... It was a supreme a prize. Was uh, it? Yes. Oh, yeah. And he championed that right from day one until the, I think the day he died. Mr. Brody? He, oh, yes, yes, he would champion that because uh, even uh, if, if I came home and uh, I did not stop by his house within a day or so of arriving back in Lake West, he would send the word out, what happened to him, where is he, I need to see him. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to talk with you and he wanted to find out what are you doing and why you're not doing what you should be doing and this type of thing. So they were always interested in your well-being, what you were doing, how you were doing, so, so forth and so on. Oh, yes. Personally, yeah. Personally, yes. Um, were you able to make up the time or or did you just get behind a year in school? Behind a year. I wound up uh, graduating in 1956 rather than 1955. But then it seems that you went on. Yes. Tell <laughs> us about that. <laughs> well, um, I, uh, I received a scholarship, football scholarship, what I thought was a full scholarship at Florida Normal. I went to Florida Normal and I was playing uh, football and because they had a senior quarterback, I was put on the defense. So I played defense and I, after the, I think it was the fifth game, I was injured. I was injured in the groans area and I needed an operation. So they perform some type of half operation up in St. Augustine. And I came down very sick and I was sent back home because they could not help me anymore. The doctors were very reluctant to do anything else at that time. Up and there. Up there. And uh, the insurance that the school had at that time apparently was fairly shaky and the doctor was a little reluctant to go any further. So I came back home and I went to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and I went down to see Dr. Sistrunk and he uh, treated me from that point on. And I said, if they cannot take care of me, I'm not going back to Florida normal. So what I did, I went, instead I went like this, I went to Southern University, the school I wanted to go to at first, but we had uh, about five or six of Lake Wales boys that I had played football with in high school at Florida Normal, so I felt a little bit more comfortable going there. But I really wanted to go to Southern University, so after they did not treat me very well medically, I decided to go to Southern University. Was that in Lakeland? That's in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh, to Louisiana. Yes. Oh, so you graduated from there? Graduated from Southern University. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then I know a little bit about your history <laughs> because yeah. you went to Roosevelt until your junior year? No. Junior, junior year. You finished your junior, junior year at Roosevelt. Right. And then something big happened. Well, about two weeks before uh, the school session started for the class year of 68, 69, we received letters in the mail to report to uh, Lake West High School because of the mandatory desegregation law that they had signed in Washington, D.C., the federal law. So uh, we had to report to Lake West High School in the uh, month of uh, August of uh, uh, 1968. Did they make provisions for the bus routes to change and for... Well, the, the bus routes had changed two years prior. It was voluntarily implemented, but then it became mandatory. So the, the bus plans were already in, in, into uh, oh, good. to play, but it was, it was mandatory. So the year, it was two years before, so actually in 1966. In 1966, right. If a student wanted to go to Lake Wales High School, Lake School they and uh, with Babson Park, some students out of uh, Howland Park, and uh, some students in Lake Wales decided to start in '68 with voluntarily integrating the schools. And what was it like? Well, it was kind of rough. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, this. Uh, We've come a long way. Yeah, it, I mean, uh, it was a tradition at Roosevelt High School. Uh, when you became a senior, the juniors would always serve you at the prom, and I mean, it was, you know, you, you had worked all these years, you wanted to graduate 
in, in, in the auditorium and, you know, we had these broken down chairs, but it was an honor to sit in those chairs and, you know, pull a tassel over and, you know, all your parents get up and, and your grandmas and your uncles and, all, you know, it was just a great celebratory time. But, you know, it was like, you know, when it came to that point, that was taken away from you, you know, the tradition. So uh, every day it was, you know, it was a lot of uh, uh, tension. And for the first, I know, six months, it was like police was up at the high school every day. It were was there, an altercation every day. Were the, that's what I was going to Yeah, ask, every day, it was, you know, it, I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was just a lot of uh, racial slurs on both sides, you know, implemented and, that was the start of fire and, and, and then, you know, it, it escalate from there. But it was a group of us, uh, Kent Lilly, your brother, uh, John Atkinson and uh, Steve Wilson and several others. We just bonded together and we just tried to minimize the impact, you know, and. Uh, and even he wasn't a senior, Ellis Hunt. Jr. Right. Was he in was in there. Yeah. He yeah. Wasn't a senior. Right. Right. That's what I thought. And but when, but now, you know, everything we look back on it and, you know, we we just look back how we just come through because we're celebrating our 40th year this year. I know. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah. Um, how did you feel as far as the classes were concerned? Did the classes seem different? Yeah, they were different. Uh, uh, now the teachers I had, Mr. C. High, Ms. Uh, Hunt, and and others. I mean, we didn't have any, you know, probably because at that time you didn't want to rock the boat. You you looking at your senior year, so you know you're not going to, to cause any confusion. And uh, but the overall program, you know, that was one of the largest classes in the history of Lake Wales. We had over 400 some students to graduate. Oh, my oh yeah, yeah, that was the largest class. We had a good football team that year. That was a, one of the largest classes for the Lake West High School band. And uh, now I was in the band at Roosevelt. I played second trombone, but when I got to the high school, my interest had changed because uh, I was uh, enrolled in the vocational school. So I didn't go to school but two hours a day. I took business, math, and English because I had all my classes. I just needed those two to graduate. So. As an alternative, I went over to the vocational school and took a couple of uh, trades, uh, welding and citrus culture. And uh, so uh, it, it was, it was a... You had yeah. the best of both worlds, Oh, yes, yes, yes. I guess. Yes, yes. I guess. So, yeah. And then did you immediately go to mortuary school? No. Uh, back then, uh, Florida had a, what they call an apprenticeship program, and I had to uh, wait three years before I transferred. But I, I was enrolled after high school in the Polk Community College. I took some classes over there, then transferred to uh, Miami-Dade and then the University of Miami. And you came back to Lake Wells right away. Right, because at that time, Lake Wells didn't have a full-time African-American funeral home. So uh, we had to go to Bartow up until the time that uh, I came back. Mm -hmm. Wow, did you open one right away? Yes, right away. And now uh, that didn't start. I, I was working at a funeral home since I was 12 at Miss Hewen Funeral Home. Uh, so I started working with that, you know, and uh, going between there and Bartow. And like, that uh, was on D Street, was D it? D Street and Lincoln Avenue. Yeah. And uh, back then, uh, you had to, like, uh, be up on the funeral director for training, so I showed Miss Ewan. And then after I got back out of uh, college, I went to Goss Funeral in Bartow and received my license. But I opened up uh, 33 years ago in 1976. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you didn't come home to live to Lake Wales. No. I wouldn't uh, say it was home, but it's, it's definitely home now. Well, it was kind of difficult for me to come back at the time. I did come back uh, a short term um, after I left school. Um, I came back and I worked for about a month, about six weeks. I was assisting the coaches and coaching for about six weeks. Then I returned back to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, because I had, as a student assistant, I had worked in the business office. And during that time, uh, we, we had uh, a student assistant in many elements of the school. For example, all of the receipts from the football, basketball game, all that. Uh, a lot of the students participated heavily in that, and that was part of the training for the School of Business. 
that you would go mm -hmm. into this. Even the student center and that type of thing, we would do inventory, we would go in and check the cafeteria records and so forth and so on. And we would uh, enter a lot of the data into the computer system, you know, we would punch cards right. and so forth and so on at that time. So uh, it, it was a natural for me to do it that way. However, uh, being pretty close to the, uh, because I didn't have a father in the home as such. Um, a couple of the, well, the vice president for financial affairs, he had adopted me as his son. And the, the head of the psychology department also was trying to adopt me as his son. So um, I was working fairly regular as a student assistant having also assisted one of my teachers in high school who was Chester Harrell, was a, my science teacher at Roosevelt. He had moved to Southern University. Uh -huh. So um, after that old football injury from Florida Normal just wouldn't allow me to continue to play football, I moved off campus with uh, Professor Chester Harrell and I would do the cooking and the cleaning and so forth and so on because I didn't have a scholarship at that time. And of course, I lived with Chester Harrell and he was teaching extension courses at Southern University of New Orleans when we first opened the campus in New Orleans. So I was fairly familiar with New Orleans. So having worked in the business office, it was a natural for me to work in the upstart business office in New Orleans, in the new school. In the new school so, um, well, so you would say that really the time you're most familiar with living in Lake Wales originally were, say, the 50s, the early 50s. Yes. And for you, it would be the mid 60s. So no, the, 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 the mid 50s, that's when I. Well, that, came. But you were he, five then. Yeah, right? but I remember a lot. I, yes. Yeah, I remember in 1957, I was in first grade. 57, 58 year, Mr. Brody got on the intercom. It was winter. You say students, because back then it was strict. You didn't make no noise, you didn't talk. Uh, you got your lesson, you didn't look out a window, you didn't look around. Really? Strict disciplinary, and those teachers were, they didn't play that. He say students get up, he came over the intercom. Would you believe we had an intercom back at Roosevelt back then? Yeah. So when he would hit the intercom, he said students get up, look out of the window, it's snowing. In 1958, the winter of 57, 58, we got out. That's the first time I've seen snow right here in Lake Wales. I remember that. I was in the sixth yep. graded Hillcrest. I so I, I have vivid memories of, of Lake Wales during that time. And also uh, during that time, uh, going back between Bell Glade and, and uh, I also did migrant work. You know, when school was out, we would pick beans, right. tomatoes. I did all of that. Harvest the corn. And uh, we couldn't do cane because the, the island people, the Bahamas, People from the Nassau, they harvested the cane. And uh, they would come over and then go back during the uh, other months. But uh, back then, commerce in Lake Wales, uh, Lincoln Avenue, B Street, C Street, A Street, we had commerce. We rarely came downtown for anything because we had grocery stores. Mr. Jenkins that started Publix, his first store was the, was the red and white store down on Lincoln Avenue where the American yeah. Legion was. Yes, I, Mr. Jenkins, who American started Legion. Publix. I remember seeing him down there bagging groceries. Yes. This was back in the 50s. And uh, we had fresh meat market where you cut your meat, Mr. Wade grocery store, right. down on the corner of C Street and Lincoln Avenue. We had three dry cleaners, Mr. Lewis Miles, Mr. Scurry, and Mr. Austin. James Austin was the tailor. Right. And he, construction and came so, later with him. So downtown to you meant Lincoln Avenue? Lincoln they, Avenue. Oh, yeah. But actually there were businesses, going businesses, other streets besides just Lincoln. Yes. 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 We, had a, we had our own movie theater. Really? Called the Tin C Can. C, C Street. Street. C Street. Yeah. Yes. Really? We had yes. three gas stations. Pure, yes. Gulf, and Standard. Yes. We had two, ca two cab, full-time cab with two-way radios. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Cab stands. Yeah. And, Did you feel and the vegetable stands? Oh yeah. Really? Oh yes. yes. Well, yeah. you must. It must. We had, we had community policing before they even brought it to now. We have a community police station on C Street and Lincoln Avenue. We had a C Street. And Lincoln. Yeah, you rang up the telephone like on Andy Griffin. We had that. <laughs> and if trouble was, you you rang up the phone and and uh, mm-hmm. you know like they had the party lines. We had the party lines in Lake Wales. And was the police part of the Lake Wales Police sure. Department? Sure. Yes. 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 Interesting. Yes. And but was could you tell there was there racial tension? There wasn't down in that area. There wasn't any on, on Lincoln. No, right? not at that time. No, Everybody. No, was no, all no, 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 no. Uh, it, it was so typical that uh, it wasn't so much the city police as it was the county police. And right. we referred to the county police always as Bill Mark. Now, what he would do, <laughs> mm-hmm. he would come <laughs> in. And he would arrest a number of people, and whoever they were working for, the people would call the county and say, release so-and-so and so-and-so. He has to be at work Monday morning. Monday morning, yeah. Yes, and they would release him. But really? it was, oh, yeah. it was a, a, a kind of cordial thing. Uh, if, if someone went out and they had too much to drink over the weekend, they would come in, they would scoop them up and arrest them and take them in. If they got too low, not noisy, or uh, Contankerous or well, what have you. So it was the sheriff's office. Yes. Even though was um, Lincoln and all of that part of city limits. Yes. 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 Always. Yes. Well, Always. Why wasn't the Lake Wells Police Department watching out for it? They chose well, it was not so much watching out for it. They had they had some uh, the city police, but at that time. The city policemen, mostly uh, at the early part of it, it was uh, like Sarge Wilson right. and other people and that had come on to the police department. Blacks policemen were not allowed to make arrests. Right. So there were black policemen? Oh, yes. yes. But yes. they couldn't arrest them. At certain times, sometimes they would have lied and so other times they would almost, yeah. they would discourage it. Mm-hmm. So what were they doing? Patrolling, basically. Patrolling, yeah. Patrolling, and they could call, call in. Call in, get on that phone and, and call. Yes, and then call. a car would come down because mostly uh, the black policemen were foot patrols. Yeah. They would walk because they lived in the community. They'd go in the house, walk out on the uniform. Like the patrol guys take the cars home now, they lived in the community, so they can just leave their house and let them know they're on duty and, you know. This is not a bad system. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> really, it's the same system, but it just upgraded. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And then back then, now uh, uh, you had more respect for policemen, and policemen had more respect for for right. people. For you know, because everybody was on a first name basis. This is a small yeah. community, you yeah. know, yeah. and they would know when the person went over the limit. Oh, that's so and so. You know, yeah. just take him on home. But right. if he got over that limit, then take him, take him in. You know, yeah. it was understanding. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. interesting. And then some of your big names, uh, James Brown and. Uh, Ray Charles, all yeah. them, they came through here. We yeah, had Rita we had Franklin. Rita Franklin, all, all, yes. We had yeah. big names coming down mm-hmm. here. Where were they? Ray Charles, in fact, Ray Charles, one of his children was born right, right. here in Lake Wales. Oh, yeah, a daughter, that. yes. Yes, mm-hmm. your daughter was born. Well, did they perform here? Yes, yes, yes. Where were they? The American born? Legion. American Legion and mm-hmm. out. Uh, uh, yeah, on How- Howell Street, there right. was a there was a, a, um, a giant. What we call a giant at that time, mm-hmm. we, we call them juke giants. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. And um, some of those, uh, I remember one night when Rita Franklin was there. Oh yeah. Wow. All those big names. Yes. They came yeah. through here. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the crowds, you just barely could get in, squeeze in. Yeah, that was wow. overcrowded. Must not have been mm-hmm. a fire marshal around. No, no. Oh, no, we you didn't, we didn't, didn't, didn't have, have, it, we didn't have yeah. anything like that then. <laughs> yeah. Did it feel like it was a good life? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a super life. Yeah. Yes. Because we we didn't have a lot of bother about a lot of things that uh, bother people today. That didn't bother us because we knew we had to stretch out everything. We came up that way. Mm-hmm. It was tradition that right. you would you would work hard, and whatever you accomplish, you accomplish. And and we admired each other accomplishing things during right. those days. Mm-hmm. Um, 
how about the population? Was the population much, much smaller than it is now? Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it was close-knit. Close-knit. Everyone knew each other. Mm -hmm. And we looked just like other. one family mm -hmm. because if, if, you, if you were a child and you did something, uh, not necessarily your parent would always be the one who would correct you or, or, or take whatever discipline action that's necessary. It could have been anyone. And, and they respected that. And you didn't want someone to take you home and tell your parents what they had to do. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Especially Mr. Brody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But he handled, he, he handled you right then. Oh, yes. Yes. He took care of business. He took care of business the spot. right then. Yes. Yeah. There was whippings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, of course, Mr. Caldwell, boy, he was a tough one, too. All of them. Oh were yeah, the strict, strict disciplinary. Yes, yes. no. Yeah. No. And good education. Did you oh, find yeah. when you went to college that you'd had a good education? Yes. Oh, yes. Quality. Quality. Yes. And we were some, a very disciplined person, right? And, and, and to some degree, more advanced. Yes, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. More prepared. Oh yeah. And some of the top-notch schools. I was in typing class with some kids from uh, Dade County and and. Uh, Broward County and Palm Beach County and all, and I was much better prepared mm -hmm. and, and, and typing than they were. And, and, and then, you know, along those lines, we thought they were hard on us, but we yes. appreciate it now. Right. Yes. Because we were better prepared. Yeah, yes. I appreciated it the mm -hmm. day I walked mm -hmm. into college yeah. <laughs> yeah. and found out that I could get out of some classes mm -hmm. right. and exempt some classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of conversation now about a municipal swimming pool and the fact that um, there was never a swimming pool or a swimming hole for black people mm -hmm. when you all were growing up. Was that a conscious decision? Were there people that were, one of the conversations I've had with people is they say that the lake was never segregated. And I said, I don't think you would know if it was segregated. Was there a sense of the segregation? Was there a sense that you weren't allowed to go to the lake? Granted, there were alligators in the lake. But. Mm. I would defer to. Uh, okay, uh, during during the uh, I would say the early sixties to the late sixties, there was uh, a, a segregation. But I would say that summer after sixty nine. That's when we were allowed to go. But before then, you could not go swim up there in Lake Wells Lake. You couldn't. But before, because I swam in there, as soon as they opened the, the, the floodgates and told us we go, I was up there. Alligators and all. But we had a, a good time. Well, and the alligators didn't bother right. us. Right. But then after, after a while, then they had this algae problem. Right, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, but, but before then, we could go, you know, the late 60s to the early 70s before the algae problem. It was a brief period then. But before then, no, you could not swim up there. So was most of the hot racial tension in Lake Wales mm -hmm. during the 60s? It was before then. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was before then. Yes. Yeah. All right, because uh, I can remember when James Austin was running for city commissioner, they burned the cross in his yard. The Klan did. I remember that vividly. Yeah. And then they would, they would march with the hoods on. I, I, I remember that vividly right here in Lake Wales. Yeah. Well, of course, that was after the 60s. No, during mm -hmm. the 60s. During, during the, the 60s. During the 60s. It was a spillover yeah. from some of the other areas because right. uh, during the 50s, that's when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And as my friends would collect me from Fort Lauderdale on the way to Southern University, mm -hmm. every time that we would head to Southern University, we would get stopped in, in, in the, uh, North Florida uh, Mississippi, somewhere along the way, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes as many as two or three times, and we would be thrown out of the car, thrown in jail for no reason whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Dogs, you know, you, you had dog bites and all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And you'd be thrown in jail that you could not even, could not sleep in the bed. You had to get in a corner and sit in a corner mm -hmm. to sleep because you couldn't sleep on the bed because it was urine and everything else all oh, on yeah. the mattress and, mm -hmm. and, and, and it was it just smelled so horrible. 
And the only way we got out, we, we, they released us from jail, we had to, most of the time, you had to preserve your telephone calls. The, the dean of the law school at Southern University and almost four times had to come and collect us and get us out of jail. Mm -hmm. And then we stopped, we stopped traveling via vehicle. And then we tried the Greyhound bus. And that was time that you couldn't go to the bathroom. You couldn't get any food to eat on your way to mm -hmm. and from. You had to carry your brown bag. So we, our parents would fry up a lot of chicken. Chicken, yeah. And fry, <laughs> put it in a brown bag. The grease and bag. you would get a, 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 a jar mm -hmm. with Kool-Aid in right. it and mm -hmm. take with you. And then when you got off the Greyhound bus, you would find some wooded areas to go and relieve yourself. Mm -hmm. You couldn't mm -hmm. go, you know. And if you went to one of these places to get something, you had to go to the back and they had to pass it out of a window, window or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it don't, don't say too much if, you know. Goodness gracious. Yes. Um, did you spend, tell us, tell me about going to school. Was it the normal, the school, the school time, the school periods that we have today? where you went to school at 8 o'clock and got out at 3 or whatever that we have today? That was fairly typical, yes. 3.30, yeah. I believe. 3.30, yeah. Yes, it was uh -huh. 3.30. Yeah. I don't actually remember what it was. Yes, like. yes. <laughs> but that, that was, uh, typical. It, there was no, no real serious problem with mm -hmm. that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just any time that we crossed a certain line, a, a demarcation line, if you will, for example, what we were talking about, the swimming around uh, Lake Wales. Well, if you wind up on Lake Shore Boulevard, most of the time, either walking or driving right. in a car, someone would uh, uh, confront you and say, what, the, what are you doing over here? Yeah. And you need to move on and you need to, mm -hmm. if, you, if you weren't Just working walking. for someone, uh, right. working at someone's you home, had no or something, up you had no business up there. Mm -hmm. Especially after sundown. When Especially the sun after. in Lake Wales, if the sun was going down, you better be home or close to your yes. property or something like that. Yeah. You wouldn't allow it downtown. And, and, and people like my uncle, who worked up there in the area, a lot of times they would ask him, do you know this boy? Do you know this girl? If so, you better tell them to, to go home yeah. or take them to the parents or right. something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So um, for me, as you know, growing up, I was unaware of this, mm -hmm. but it was just an undercurrent of being aware of where right. you were supposed to be. And mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I understood. Yeah. It was just a normal thing, just like getting up in the morning. You didn't make a big fuss no, about it. No, it was just understood. Mm -hmm. It was a way of life. Mm -hmm. And yet I remember very well going to the Roosevelt um, homecoming parades in, mm -hmm. on Park Avenue every time. And there were as many white people at the parade yeah. as there were blacks. Yeah. That yeah. was the best parade in town. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Y'all yeah. were probably in those parades. Well, I was in the band. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. the band was the best band yeah. in the yeah. state of Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a band um, a drum major. Yeah. Was it was Bill Bama. Yes. Willie Joe Edwards. Willie uh -huh. Joe. Yeah, he uh -huh. was the drum major. Everybody yeah. talked about him. Whatever yeah. happened to him. He's, he's here. He's still here. He, he, he uh, retired from Progress Energy. Really? But yeah, he's here. Yeah, and he's on the radio with me every Sunday. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you tell him I remember. Oh, okay. Him. Okay. <laughs> we all yeah. remember him. Yeah, yeah. Now his sister, Bill Bama's sister, wind up in Houston, where I went to after leaving Southern University, oh. and she came there after high school, and because we were such a close knit community, I took her in and found her a job and so forth and so on. And I taught her how to work at the Longshoreman Credit Union. So I installed her as a clerk there and she ultimately became the president of the credit union. She ultimately obtained a master's degree. Three of her four children obtained their master's degree. Wow. Yes, and she, it's over the, she was over the credit union I think last year she turned it over to one of her children. Mm -hmm. And that's the International Longshoreman Credit Union in Houston. And they finance cars, homes, everything. 
Were you working there at the time? Yeah, well, I was a credit union organizer. I organized over 50 credit unions in Texas when I was in Texas wow, while, I was working, while I was working for the university. Wow. Yeah. Well, like Wellians did pretty well for themselves. Oh, yeah. Oh, after yeah. they got out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why uh, when you say you didn't stay around, well, you, there was no work No here. opportunities. No opportunities. The same mm -hmm. thing was in Louisiana because when I... When I graduated from Southern University, I made the third high school on the accounting exam, and they refused to hire me. So we had a lawsuit going for some almost 30 years, and we ultimately had to drop it because it, it, it was no longer this type of denial of people coming in right. based on mm -hmm. race, uh, creed, or color. So, so you organized credit unions throughout the South? Mostly in Texas. Oh, in Texas? Yes. A couple of them in Oklahoma, but uh, most or all of them was in and Texas. And were you working for an organization? I was working for the university, and I oh, was doing, right. uh, I was doing side work for the Bureau of Federal Credit Union. See, we had a credit union at the university, and we were running a pretty good show there at the university with the credit union. So it was a natural for us to go out to churches and other places and set up credit unions and things. And Houston almost had churches on every <laughs> corner. <laughs> yes. So it yeah. was an easy task to just transcend in from the university to set up a smaller credit union and help monitor. Now the Bureau of Federal Credit Union, they were happy about that because then they had someone who could go along with that person to help set these credit unions up. So they, they felt, sometimes they felt a little uncomfortable, excuse me, in the black community and having someone that had run a successful credit union or was running a successful credit union, that was good for them. Mm -hmm. So so we well, did that. speaking of churches on every corner, it seems like we've had, we have churches on every corner. Yeah, yeah, and like did well, we always? Not always, no, no. no, no. It was no. basically about four or five denominations and everything, but now you have about 25 or 30, you yes. know, ministries and churches now. Exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. And there's yep. still some really big ones. But oh, there, yes. There are yeah. lots of small, small ones. Small ones, yeah. Were you always preaching? No. No, I didn't do that until about 1985 at First Institution of Baptist Church, yeah. I always worked around the funeral home, yeah. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. Mm -hmm. Could conduct a funeral. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was ordained in, in the early 90s. Yeah. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I heard once that the best way to succeed if you were from Roosevelt or later Lake Wells High mm -hmm. School was to be a preacher or a teacher. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was somewhat true yeah. because... Um, I had people to question my veracity for going into business. They say, why didn't you go into education? And I said, well, uh, I said, what I'm doing, I'm trying to stretch it a little bit further rather than say, I want to teach, I would love to teach math. I say, another natural would be to go into accounting. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And I, after the more I involved myself in the accounting curriculum, I said math just has to go by the wayside for the time being and I will just go on and concentrate on business and that's what happened. Because I, I found it fascinating uh, with them allowing me to work with the university business office, you know, I was able to, you know, spend well, a lot of my time speaking there. Speaking of banking, what was done, how, were, how was banking done for the black people in the 30s, 40s, and 50s? Well, I, I couldn't answer that. He probably... The, the, it, was, it was very limited uh, uh, banking. Uh, we did not have any banking to uh, mention of anything until maybe the mid-50s. And we had, about, um, we had about four institutions in the country at that time. And one of them was in St. Louis, Missouri, that um, almost all the blank blacks had to go to St. Louis, Missouri to be trained as bankers. Really? And uh, we were the sixth or seventh uh, bank when we opened a black bank in Houston. And we had to send people there for training and they came back. And I was on one of the original boards in Houston. Wow. 
So, uh, so it was it was a long time coming. So what we would do, we didn't do much banking. We well, we did uh, most most of, most of businesses. How did they handle that? Most of most of our banking was done just by going either to the bank to cash a check or having someone to cash a check. Most of the, most of the jobs that we had at that time, people would go to the bank and they would get the payroll and they would put them in these little tan envelopes and yep. they would give you cash. And our people oh, were really? operating basis oh, cash, cash most of the time. And occasionally we got to the point where we were doing money orders and things right. like that. But other than that, we didn't do real banking really? until mm -hmm. later on. Yeah. So was the business were the businesses on Lincoln Avenue run on cash? I mean, yeah, you, mostly you cash. Write, yes. Mm -hmm. You didn't write mm -hmm. a check. No, 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 no. You card. didn't. Nobody wrote checks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was cash. very seldom that you saw a check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was almost a no, no. That didn't come to the late sixties. Uh, yeah. You know, seventies. That you know when it started coming in. Because the first bank I remember was Lake Web Bank and Trust. It's yes, yeah. It's Wachovia now. Wachovia. And then yeah. I, the next one I remember was uh, uh, where Sun Trust is. Right. Uh, it was uh, Florida. What was the name of that bank? Uh, I can't think of it. But, but, and it then it was. was I, I know the bank you're talking about because I was around here. Yeah, because it was before it was Sun Trust and, and, and all of that. I can't remember. But I, I, I'm but, uh, but I remember yeah. Lake Wales Bank and Trust. That was the first one I remember. Then First Federal came of Lake Wales. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. And that's that actually is is where the is on First Street and between Central and Park. I think. Right. And Central and Stewart. That's where it ended up being. Yeah. Yes. But the first uh, first federal now was uh, uh, it was where uh, let's see you know where where the uh, first federal bank is. You know, before they went out on uh, on sixty. No, next to the post office. What's that? Park. Oh yeah. Now I remember that at the yes. first Greyhound bus station. Yes. That was the first Greyhound bus station in Lake Wales. At the end of Park. Wait, wait. First Federal, that branch that they left. Right. Mm -hmm. That was the Greyhound bus station. Yes. I remember mm -hmm. when the double deckers used to come in there. Well, when I say double decker, it was two story buses, and uh, uh, because I used to catch that bus between Bell Glade and Lake Wales. And that's where the first bus station was in Lake Wales. Because, see, I thought the bus station was, like, on First Street or somewhere no. around there. No, the first one was right, right, That right, was later on. That was later on. But the first one was right there on the corner of uh, Wetmore and Park Avenue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we had talked about some of the people coming to tell their stories in Lake Wales. And um, we have a number of pioneer families in Lake Wales, don't we? Oh, yes. Yes. Who are they? Like the. Well, uh, uh, I'm going to let uh, <laughs> Lawrence do. But I would say uh, you, you have the Adams, you have the Austins, you have um, the Carvins. The Carvins, you have uh, the Bickers, you have the Branson. Petersons. Uh, Petersons. Yeah. Williams. The Williams. Um, and when the Fields, uh, who well. came in a little later, Hawkins, uh, yeah. Isom, uh, the Isom, the Lee, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, were those people? Did they came, come in as far back as the Turpentine? Uh, Some of them, the Petersons, yeah, and 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 uh, so the teens, they came back yeah. as far back as yeah, because the uh, all they Pearsall. were here, and the then. Remember when it was Towns and Lumber? Yes. When all right. of them worked at Towns and Lumber Company? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Davises, they were some of the first ones too. And, yeah. you know, Linda Kimbrough organized the walk between the Kiwanis Park and, um, and Wilshire. Mm hmm. And she said that, that people lived near Kiwanis Park yes. when they first came? Yes. When they first came. Mm -hmm. in Kiwanis Park. In tents or in houses? Uh, you know what well, they would build the little shanties, what we call shanties. Really? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That yeah. must have been in the teens. Well, it no, 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 not in the teens. No, no, a little later. No, well, you did some in the thirties mm -hmm. and in the forties. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really. 
See, a number of those little shanty type houses and things like that, my father built a lot mm -hmm. of those things. Really? And they call them shotguns? Yeah. Because yeah. right. there's two or three right there on the first yeah. street and, and, uh, yeah. exactly. and uh, Wilshire Avenue. Exactly. I always, always think when I, every time I pass, Epps, uh, when he, I think he's moved since moved, his funeral home, but um, right where the funeral home is, mm -hmm. just a little, um, a little east of the funeral home. We had a home there, and right across the street where the, uh, the, the uh, that little store over there where a lot of people hang right. out. Mm -hmm. uh, the McNeils lived there, right? And the house was off the ground. They mm -hmm. were on these steps right. and things, and mm -hmm. you know. Were, were any of the shanties moved? I mean, did they ever? A move number of them was moved to different locations, but they've almost disappeared now for the most part, mm -hmm. other than the ones that Mimi wanted to right. retain. To preserve. Mm -hmm. Yes, preserve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. Uh, did yeah. people work for. Flor uh, when I was growing up, it was Florida Citrus Canners, but did people work for Florida Citrus Canners at that time? For yes, what but the Citrus Hunt Bank? brother was the one where they would do most of the housing that. Uh, uh, that their workers would live in the house. Right, Hunt Brothers had houses. Yes, mm -hmm. where they would build these the little shotgun houses. D yeah. Street and C Street, and D some of those houses are still Street. living. Really? I mean, still, uh, still, uh, standing. Yeah. still standing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And s they were built by Hunt, I mean, Hunt Brothers paid mm -hmm. to build yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So those are really historic homes. Yeah, they're still, yeah. they're still up. And yeah. being occupied? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some That's of them, cool. the hurricanes yeah. and so forth, and didn't right. do much damage to those. Did right. your dad build any of those? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. If, if, if you was to go by the uh, old Church of God by Faith on C Street, mm -hmm. next to uh, Reverend Cecil Garrett, those houses right in there. Yeah. 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 Right down from Allen Temple, they're still there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't that something? Yeah. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. Well, have we had anybody famous come out of Lake Wales? Plenty of people. <laughs> oh, Amari Stoudemire. That's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Did he actually live here? Yeah, he was born here. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes, yeah. on East Street and, and mm -hmm. Washington Avenue. Well, he wasn't yeah. born there. I mean, you know, I mean, he's born in a hospital, but I mean, he's, that's you know, that's his family house, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. He's doing pretty well. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then you had uh, uh, Hampton. Hampton, House that's Smith. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You had the house Smith, uh, house Smith, with house Smith and house Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. so forth. And then, and how did um, you go about forming the Roosevelt Social and Recreation Club, or is it Recreation and Social? Well, the, the, we did went you about all that. Stay in touch. Yes, um, a number of us stayed in touch. Uh, Albert Hawkins and myself, we mostly communicated with uh, between Jerome Mack. And his brother, we would, uh, we stayed in touch with his brother in the Northeast. He was in the Washington area. His brother, Jerome Mike, brother, and we would stay in touch with Jerome Mike back here in Lake Ware. And Jerome would always feed us information as to what was going on back here. And of course, Albert Hawkins, because his family, uh, he he um, he would just come back. He was just family tied to his family so tight. And his father was this way, so, you know, it was a natural for him to come back here. I didn't have a father back here then, so he would come back. So he, every time uh, he would come back to the Northeast, he would always get in touch with me. And he said, we, we need to go back and we need to do this, do this, that, and other. Say, because we've lost all the commerce we had in the community and right. so forth and so on, and we r really need to rebuild and do this, that, and other. So what we decided, we said, well, well, we'll go back and we'll give it a shot. We will try. And we wanted to keep the name associated with Roosevelt to some degree. And the offshoot from that was Roosevelt Recreation. And what we wanted to do, we wanted to say, let's not encroach upon anyone. What we would do is we would create a recreation arm because we said health and recreation is very important. So we said we would like to work with the elderly people, and so we would create an exercise group and so forth and so on. And that's how we started. And, and Ms. where did Ms. you Glad start? We started at uh, C Street and Lincoln Avenue. It was on C Street. It was did just a one store, right there in the Walker Building. Okay. We, we had that uh, extreme. Uh, it was south. Um, 
south of Lincoln on Lincoln Road, right. the south most portion of that building. We started in there, and I think it was about um, 16, 12 by 16 or something like that. And, and what year was that? That was that 1998, started. May of 98. And we stayed there for a year, and we went across the street to 225 Lincoln Avenue in the two-story building. And we renovated that. We put about $12,000 into it. We renovated it, and we opened up to have more social functions and things there and recreation and that type of thing. And did you incorporate? Yes, we incorporated May of 1998. Then, uh, then after we talked with the city for some period of time, they suggested, especially Albert Kirkland, he wanted us to create a not-for-profit arm. So we created, excuse me, a not-for-profit arm, and we wanted to stay with the Roosevelt tradition, so we went with green and gold, because uh -huh. that was our school colors, colors yeah. green and gold. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so now we have, yes, our 501c3, yes. And uh, having been associated with businesses for so long, uh, they had asked me to set these business entities up and see that they were run very strict. And what happened when we wanted to build the B Street Community Center, James Austin, Booker Young, Ozell Wilson, a number of them, uh, they wanted to build a building uh, um, on the south side of Lincoln Avenue where the parking lot is there. Right. Mm -hmm. But there was a two-story building there that had been burned out. Right. So when we looked at it, I was on the chamber board at the time, and uh, it, we, we said, this just not going to work because of the... Uh, <coughs> the fact that you, you had upstairs and you were dealing with elderly people in that community right. and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, then we would need elevators and so forth and so on. So there was a problem with the property where the B Street Center is, is situated right today. now. And so the Northwest Business Council, which Austin and Ozell and all of them was part of, they owned some property in there because of the tax situation, they were at the point of losing it. So we were encouraged by the city to try to acquire the property and then give it to the city and we would build a facility there, which would give you some space it, uh, for possible expansion uh, from the uh, typical uh, uh, community center to uh, a combination community center and a daycare. So we, we, we were happy about that. So we said, let's just jump on this because we had about uh, 400 and some thousand dollars through the CDBG that was accumulating each year, roughly 104,000 a year. So we went for that. And, and when did you open B Street? 2000, January. I failed to mention at the beginning of this talk that today is April the 6th, 2009. <laughs> I usually introduce these by stating the date, and yes. I failed to do that this time. But it's the mm -hmm. date has not changed since we started <laughs> talking, <Yeah. laughs> and that's good. Yeah. So really what happened, we purchased the, uh, um, uh, a couple of pieces of property in that area, and we also uh, purchased tax deeds and so forth. And we uh, allowed them to turn it over to the city, turn it over to the city, and the city agreed for us to manage the facility. So the Roosevelt Recreation and Social Club group is the managing agent for the B Street Center. The Green and Gold Foundation is the programming agency. I see. And we have what we call resident agencies, which is NAACP, Roosevelt, Alumni, uh, American Legion, and now, while we do not call it uh, um, a resident agent, it's typically does the same thing as the resident agent, that is UIC, Unity, Unity Community. Community. Mm -hmm. I would say, yes. we may not be a resident agency, but we're pretty but, darn but, but close. But you're close to being it, so that's, that's where we are. But they, they felt like we needed top management style to run this facility. 
And to be honest with you, the reporting we do to the city now is more extensive than any organization that exists anywhere on accountability. And takes all the questions out. Take oh, all, yeah. eliminate all oh, the yeah. questions. Do either of you have any comments about favorite things or memories that you'd like to have recorded on film? People, places, events? I miss having uh, some of the programs in the Northwest area. For example, May Day used to be oh, yeah. so, so, the celebration of May Day was something that w really, and, 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 and during the other times when we always talked about vacation Bible school and oh, things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. the, a lot of tradition you know, things that just faded away that uh, it had so much substance to them. So I miss things like that. We need to discuss that going forward. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, that we have been told that our time is up. It's, it's over. We, we, we didn't get the Mayday part of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs>